The content of this podcast is provided for general informational purposes only and is not intended as, nor should it be considered a substitute for professional medical advice. Hello, this is Karen Nickel, family nurse practitioner, and you are listening to Itchy and Bitchy, a podcast that provides answers to your many unanswered health questions. I want to remind you about my course for perimenopausal women. After speaking with lots of women who are in this phase of life, I have developed a comprehensive course to help address the symptoms that so many women experience in their 30s, 40s, and early 50s. I would love to have the opportunity to talk to you about the course to see if it is the right fit for you. There is a link on our website, itchyandbitchy.com, and our Facebook page, INB Podcast, where you can schedule an appointment for a Zoom call with me. Listener Andrea, I, I don't know if she's Andrea or Andrea, but... I will say Andrea for now. Andrea left a concern or question on our Facebook page, IMB Podcast, about recurrent bacterial vaginosis, commonly called by the shortened name BV. Andrea says, this is her words, I struggle with recurring BV. That's how I found your podcast. I was very curious to get a better understanding of urea plasma and mycoplasma. I was tested for them both when I had a UTI. They decided to randomly do those two tests because of my frequent visits, and they were both positive. I didn't really get a good explanation of what these diagnoses were, and wanted a better understanding. Hope this makes it to the podcast or a personal response. Thank you. Okay, Andrea, we are gonna we are gonna dig into this. Mycoplasma hominis and Uroplasma urolyticum are commonly found in the genital tract in sexually active women. In some areas of the world, up to 80% of women have colonization of these two bacteria. Colonization is when a microorganism is present in or on a host. The microorganism grows and multiplies without the host developing symptoms or an immune response. So it's residing in the vaginal area, but we're not having any reaction to it. Urea plasma is in the mycoplasma family, which are the smallest cellular organisms known to humans. Also, urea plasma does not have a cell wall. As a result, this bacteria does not respond to penicillin and other antibiotics that work by breaking down the bacterial cell wall. Urea plasma is also resistant to fluoroquinolone antibiotics. For instance, there is an 82 to 84% resistance to levofloxacin, which is Levaquin, many of you have heard of, and a 62% resistance to moxifloxacin, which is brand name Avalox. The good news is that antibiotics, including josomycin, doxycycline and tetracycline have outstanding coverage against urea plasma and mycoplasma hominis. Sometimes the urea plasma bacteria will multiply in great numbers, causing a disruption of the delicate balance of normal flora and causes infections and other health-related issues. Most of the time, women are not even aware that they have the bacteria present, People usually have no symptoms as long as the urea plasma is not overpowering the normal bacteria in the vaginal area. I'm going to say that again because we're going to talk about that normal flora a little bit later. People usually have no symptoms as long as the urea plasma is not overpowering the normal bacteria in the vaginal area. Urea plasma is transmitted through sexual intercourse. Urea plasma infections occur more often in women than men. Is that little piece of information sounding familiar? I feel like I say that (laughs) every week. Also, if a woman gets a urea plasma vaginal infection while pregnant, the baby can contract the infection while in the uterus or when moving through the vaginal canal during birth. Most people with urea plasma infection, as I said, don't have any symptoms. Urea plasma infection is a possible cause of inflammation in the urethra, 
which is called urethritis. Some of you have may experience this. It's a little bit different than a bladder infection. You know, bladder infection, you feel it sort of up in your pelvis. Urethritis, you really feel it sort of at the opening uh, where the pee comes out. Some of the symptoms that both men and women can experience when they have urethritis include pain during urination, a burning sensation, and sometimes vaginal discharge. That discharge obviously is penile discharge in men, not vaginal discharge. Urea plasma can also cause bacterial vaginosis, as our listener experienced and talked to me about via Facebook. Symptoms of BV can include watery vaginal discharge and an unpleasant vaginal odor. Urea plasma may also increase your risk for other conditions, including kidney stones, premature labor, respiratory diseases in newborns if you're pregnant when you get an infection. Other pregnancy complications from urea plasma species can include premature rupture of the amniotic membrane, preterm labor, infection of the amniotic fluid, invasion of the bacteria into the placenta, low birth weight, and inflammation of the tissue in the umbilical cord. So lots of potential problems if you're pregnant and have an untreated urea plasma infection. Unfortunately, providers don't usually routinely test for urea plasma in pregnancy. They also don't test in women who are not pregnant if they don't have symptoms. So if you don't have symptoms, you are not going to get screened for urea plasma or mycoplasma. But it can be diagnosed by collecting a vaginal swab if BV is suspected, a urine sample to rule out a UTI, and if a uterine infection is suspected, an endometrial swab or biopsy can be done. So after this quick little break, we will talk about prevention. When I was a kid, in order to entertain myself, I got pretty creative, but it wasn't always a safe option. I built things in the garage from whatever was lying around and started sewing unattended when I was nine years old. Now, thanks to KiwiCo, your kids can have fun, creative, and safe play. If you want to encourage creativity and love for learning in your children, a KiwiCo crate is a must. Each month, KiwiCo delivers crates that cover lots of interesting topics that allows for exploration of everything from engineering robots without rummaging around in the garage to crates from the art and creativity line, no sewing machine needed. The school-aged children in my family dive into their KiwiCo crates as soon as they arrive at their door. The paleontologist starter kit was a hit. They loved mixing the water and plaster of Paris and then experienced the excitement of waiting overnight to then cut the cup in the next morning and discover the cast of a dinosaur. And that's just one part of this fabulous crate. Do you want to reduce your children's screen time? With KiwiCo, the kids in your life can have the excitement of receiving a kit in the mail each month, and they will enjoy a creative activity. No screens needed. And the kit comes with everything needed to start the project right away. Help your child be a creative, imaginative, and self-confident thinker. It really is a no-brainer. And there's no commitment, so you can pause or cancel any time. Redefine learning with play. Explore hands-on projects that build creative confidence and problem-solving skills with KiwiCo. Get 50% off your first month plus free shipping on any crate line at KiwiCo.com slash itchy. That's 50% off your first month at K-I-W-I-C-O dot com slash itchy. Green Chef is a CCOF certified meal kit company. Green Chef makes eating well easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, including keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just a more balanced meal option. Are you looking for a high-protein diet? Green Chef has a new collection of high-protein recipes. All of them include at least 
40 grams of protein per serving. Green Chef now has over 50 weekly menu and market items, and you can mix and match your order without changing your plan. You can have vegan one day and keto the next day. Green Chef also has quick breakfasts and 10-minute lunches, so you can eat well all day long. You know how I love companies that focus on sustainability. Green Chef has the only meal kit that is both carbon and plastic offset and helps you decrease your food waste by up to 23% versus grocery shopping. Welcome the spring season in by using Green Chef to support your healthy lifestyle. Try their fast and fit recipes that are under 750 calories and ready in 25 minutes or less. You cannot beat that. At our home, we eat a Green Chef meal three times weekly, and I have loved all of the recipes. One of my favorites is their Thai coconut chicken soup. I love, love, love that recipe. You've got to try it. Go to greenchef.com slash itchy60 and use code itchy60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. Go to greenchef.com slash itchy60 and use code itchy60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Welcome back. Let's talk prevention. As I mentioned earlier, urea plasma is resistant to many antibiotics, but does respond to the antibiotics jocimycin, doxycycline, and tetracycline. So those are our treatment options. However, there are some measurements that you can take to prevent urea plasma infections. The first step is use barrier protection, such as condoms during sex to help prevent transmission of urea plasma. Also, a review of 20 studies found that, and I quote this, probiotic interventions are effective for treatment and prevention of BV, prevention of recurrences of candidiasis, that's a yeast infection, and UTIs, and clearing HPV lesions. No study reported significant adverse events related to the probiotic intervention. So probiotics can really, that are specified for vaginal health, can really help with all kinds of vaginal infections and UTIs. A really good vaginal probiotic option is Garden of Life's Raw Probiotics Vaginal Care, which is shelf stable. It doesn't have to be refrigerated. And you take one cap daily by mouth. That's Garden of Life's Raw Probiotics Vaginal Care, one cap daily. Also, the vagina is supposed to have a very low pH. The area is very acidic. If the pH becomes more alkaline, meaning there is a higher pH in the vagina, An environment is created that allows bacteria to thrive. Bacteria love, love, love a high pH. So to prevent or help prevent BV, lowering the pH in the vagina is very important. One way we can do that is using vaginal boric acid. And I know people are probably screaming right now at whatever they're listening to this podcast on, but um, boric acid sounds like a terrible idea to put in the vagina, but really it just brings down the pH um, really low. So using a vaginal boric acid can help people with recurrent BV and helps them by restoring their vaginal pH to a normal low, low pH. In a small 2009 study of 58 women, so pretty small, the use of 600 milligrams of boric acid suppositories along with antibiotics helped resolve bacterial infections after two months of treatment in 88% of participants. So they didn't take the antibiotics the whole time, but they used the boric acid for the two months and helped with clearing up the infection in 88% of the participants. The boric acid capsules or suppositories can be inserted into the vagina every night for about one to two weeks to help treat symptoms. 
However, if you have recurrent BV infection like Andrea's experiencing, usual dosing recommendation is to use the boric acid suppository one to two times a week for about three months. A really good over-the-counter option is Azo. A lot of you have heard of Azo for UTIs. But Azo, that company makes a boric acid suppository and they are 600 milligram suppositories and it's a really good product option and um, you would use it once daily for one to two weeks if you have if you start having odor and, and watery discharge. But again, if you're having this over and over and over again, you really need to hit it in a different way by doing it one to two times a week for about three months. And to use the suppositories, most of these suppositories don't have an applicator. So you just insert it with your finger. And so you want to wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water and then dry them with a clean towel and then gently insert the 600 milligram suppository inside your vagina. And you can use an applicator preferred, but most of these products don't come with an applicator. If you have an applicator, you always obviously want to dispose that and then wash your hands thoroughly. Another couple pieces of information in using boric acid suppositories is that sexual intercourse can impact vaginal pH. So it is best to wait 24 to 48 hours after inserting a suppository before having sex. So you don't want to goof up what you're trying to fix. You can use the suppositories during your period if you're having symptoms like odor. You should use a pad versus a tampon while using the suppositories. And most women see benefits from the boric acid suppositories by day seven. So it's a very effective way to help with BV. And using the boric acid suppositories along with a good vaginal probiotic, like I mentioned before, Gardens of Life, raw probiotic, vaginal probiotic, those two things together can really, really help prevent getting in this recurrent infection cycle. In summary, if you have recurrent BV, like Andrea, taking a good daily probiotic to support vaginal health and or, but ideally both, use boric acid vaginal suppositories with short-term dosing of either one vaginal suppository nightly for one to two weeks, or if you suffer from recurrent BV, they can be used one to two times a week for three months. Thank you, Andrea, for the great question. You are not alone out there, so I know this podcast episode will help a lot of women. I also want to thank KiwiCo and Green Chef for sponsoring today's episode. I encourage you to visit our Facebook page, IMB Podcast, where you can leave comments or questions for me like Andrea did. Our website is itchyandbitchy.com, and there are blogs on the site with some of our subjects available for you to read. On the Facebook page and website, we have the information about how to schedule an appointment with me so we can chat about how my perimenopause course can help you if you are going through this phase in life. As always, thanks to Forrest Winsel, our producer and composer of our theme music, and the person who does all that work when I say we are going to do it. Forrest does it. I just blab in the microphone. Thank you, Forrest. And check out his album called An Awful Lot. Go to wherever you stream your favorite music to listen. And if you don't know where to stream music, you can find the album on Apple Music or Spotify. And remember, as always, your health is in your hands. (laughs) 